Hello and many thanks for joining us. You're watching Off the Press on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewiki. I have two guests with me to help look at the headlines this morning. I have um, the only man here this morning, uh, Femi Ido Adegoke, public affairs analyst. Pleasure to have you. And of course, we have the beautiful Ifi Oji. Thank you very Always much. Always a pleasure, Felicity. All right. I will start with the Nation newspaper this morning. Dangote loses $240 in five hours to coronavirus. WHO declares COVID-19 a pandemic. Lagos isolates family of four to others. That's it on your screen now. Uh, just above the masthead you're looking at, Asu passes no confidence vote on Babalaking. Okay. Teachers seek uh, his removal. Uh, you find details on page uh, 43 of the paper. And uh, we also have uh, Bayalsa Babalola, Babalola Olani Pekun protest Supreme Court 60 million naira fine. Esquire board chair forged 336 student signatures. Witness tells George that's um, interesting. <laughs> okay, let's go down a bit and see what's on it. We have the South South APC leadership. South South APC leaders snob Obaseki court OK's neck meeting. Buhari, I have no hand in Sanusi's dethronement. President behind removal claims Kwakwenso. Amir gets appointment later. And on the back page of the Nation newspaper, we have life and legislation in a time of coronavirus. And Hadball is talking about an absentee governor. Who could this be? Let's find out when we take a look at that story. But let me just come to my guest so we can begin this uh, conversation this morning. Which of these headlines would you want to take on, Femi? Okay, I'll start from the top left because it's there, it's generated, and that's the ASU passes no confidence, uh, confidence of vote, no confidence vote yeah. on Babalaki. Um, University of Lagos was supposed to have a convocation ceremony and uh, it's been put on hold, mainly because there's a dispute between the VC and the governing council, which Babalaki happens to be the chair of the governing council. So there is some, there's been some debate and discussion that there's a rift between the two of them. And then they've called on the NUC either to dispose one of them, either to take the VC out or take Babalaki out. But now ASU has come out in defense of one of their own because definitely the, the VC must have been a member of the ASU in the past, even though he's now in the admi administration of the university. But they are defending their own, and they say Baba Lakin should be out. There's been this headlong trouble between the two of them. OK, Ify, over to you. Um, I will just look at um, just roughly the effects of coronavirus, especially with uh, some of our billionaires in Nigeria and a lot of our uh, businessmen. I mean, in general terms, anyway, I know that a lot of the work of work we do in Nigeria, products that are handled in Nigeria, are generated from Chinese business or Chinese uh, interests. And because there have been obviously steps taken by the Chinese themselves, which I find really surprising, not even the Nigerians, to block any kind of uh, movement of persons, and even to some to some extent, even cargo. You know, a lot of uh, there's a, there's always going to be a fallback on businesses in Nigeria from that uh, move. And it's actually quite alarming that Nigerians themselves did not find it a cause of concern or a growing concern to ensure that these uh, businessmen or the goods and cargo, even if, even, yes, to even that detriment, were not, um, are not um, being quarantined, or at least not even being stopped from bring, coming to Nigeria as other countries had done. So I, I guess Dangote is not any exception to this um, rule as well. And that is what I find really concerning. All right, uh, let's go to another paper now. Uh, let, let's talk about this. You, you both yeah. avoided this. Let's talk about the Bukhari No, scene. I didn't avoid it because he's on, he's on the pages of uh, all the newspapers. All the newspaper. papers, mm. okay. Uh, let's start with The Nation, where we're seeing it first. Well, um, I actually read this story in the, in the, the Nations, this one. Okay. Uh, it's um, the former governor of uh, Kano State, Kwan Kwan so, uh, the man who has the Kwan Kwan Sia movement, who has the Mammoth followership as well, mm -hmm. in Kano State, has come out to say the president has actually ordered the detriment of Sanusi. And that is coming on the fallout from presidency saying they don't have a hand, they don't know about it. 
And for me personally, I feel the presidency shouldn't pull a wool over our eyes. We're no fools. Such things is not going to happen in the country. I'm not saying they ordered it or orchestrated it. But you can't tell us you didn't know about it. No governor will dethrone such a uh, high-level monarch without... But it's not their place to interfere. Like they no, I'm not saying interfere without being informed. Mm -hmm. You must have some information. They, they are not saying they are not aware. They're saying they don't have any hand in his dethronement. No, That's quite different. No, you cannot say you don't have a hand in his in dethronement because in some quarters it is said that even the process did not go through um, due process, the dethronement, because some members of the council of the Kano State Council are saying they got an order. And that's what Kankwansu is saying there, that some members of the Kano State Council are saying it was an order that they followed. So it was not a due process. A due process. But Sanusi is holding the arm and said, I've agreed the dethronement. But you cannot banish me. And it was mentioned by Kankwansu that in Nigerian constitution, section 35, you cannot banish a man, even if you dethrone him. The constitution permits you to dethrone him. But you can't banish him. Well, some of the reasons that has been given it has nothing to do with the human um, um, legalities, so mm -hmm. to speak. Because it's, it's gone beyond um, that. Yes, it's more like tradition, mm. uh, disobedience to the yeah. uh, the state I agree. government. I agree. And then there is a tradition that when you are dethroned, yeah. you are banished to avoid, um, you know, Public, uh, disorder, you know social violence disorder. And yeah, all yeah social disorder. He, he should be he should be given that freedom to go to where he wants, not forced. To go to Nassau. And now, federal government saying they don't know about it. Who controls the uh, civil defense? Who controls the DSS? No state governor has uh, the, the constitutional right to, on its own to use the DSS or the uh, civil defense. Well, they are controlled by the we're presidency. We're hearing new things about this. Uh, we'll see what happens in the coming days. Um, we do know that he's gotten some appointment. Uh, that's uh, also on the front page mm -hmm. of the Nation newspaper. Mm -hmm. Does that excite you in any way? Because some have said that him being an emir was actually a gag on his abilities to actually uh, do more good for the people. I think a great person, a great leader, will rise to the top in any given circumstance that they find themselves. That is just who they are. They are meant to, they are born to lead. I had the pleasure of uh, being in his uh, presence when he was a very young banker. And uh, it, was, it was one of those moments where, even though I was very young, as a young lawyer, and he was probably, I think, at middle, mid-level at the bank, right, you could already see uh, the signs of greatness in this man. He just came for a very casual knowledge development session in the law firm I used to work for. And, he, and the kind of way the, way, the manner in which he spoke about, and the passion he has for Nigeria is unparalleled, to be honest. And we hope that uh, more, uh, we, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see more from him. All right, so let's go to this day newspaper and see what's uh, making the rounds. Amid oil price crash, FG says, no cost to panic. That's it uh, on your screen now. MFILA banking sector credit rises to over 17.4 trillion naira. NNPC targets production cost reduction. Dangote task government and economic diversification. That's all on the front page of this day newspaper. And just beside the picture of cementing the future, uh, we see the governor of Lagos State in company, uh, in some good company basically. Um, beside it, we see WHO declares coronavirus outbreak pandemic. That's um, some people say concerning. We go to the top of the paper, just above the masthead. Court restrains APC officials from interfering with neck meeting. We've not heard the last of the situation with the national chairman and uh, in Edo State. Well, let's see what the outcome of that meeting would be about. Mm -hmm. Um, we also are looking at Buhari. I have no hand in Senators' dethronement. We've talked about that extensively. Um, FG declares ASU strike illegal act of corruption. You find details on page six. That's at the bottom of the paper. Behind it, you were looking at um, what Muhammad Sanusi II told me. That's uh, from Olushegu Ademi. What did he tell him that he had to share with us? And all of the back page has it. You might want to go uh, read uh, details uh, for yourself. I'll come to my guest now. If I'll start with you. Let's um, look at the scre screamer. I will look at uh, the federal government saying that there's no cause to panic. I'm normally the eternal optimist, but I'm sorry. As you're saying no cause to panic, I am panicking as I'm speaking to you. I mean, it's ridiculous because at the end of the day, I, I, I recall uh, a senior member of PwC was interviewed. I think it was probably about just as they were trying to uh, 
put, get some understanding of what the um, finance um, bill would look like before it was enacted. And he made a very, very important statement. He said, I, I'm not going to quote him directly, but what he said was that you cannot hedge your whole entire budget on oil prices and, and, and um, because the barrels per day are not, uh, are not steady and the price per barrel as well is not steady. So how can you hedge your entire budget on just one stream, revenue stream? And I mean, because we're not even sure what the revenue stream will be. And lo and behold, what the predictions were at the time have come to bear. So I feel that, uh, yes, it's time for the federal government to op wake up, Look at what um, look at look at what's in front of them. They need to look at a diversification at a more serious not at a more serious level, not just uh, playing lip service according to what um, Dangote was saying. Not just playing lip service. Actually, look at it in critical terms and try and find ways. They have, I mean, they've been trying with the uh, yes, loan to see. deposit ratio. They've yes, they've increased the credit, but who who is able to meet the criteria for them to fund and give these loans out? That is the question they have to ask. There has to be more integration with the SMEs and the federal government to ensure that it's a relationship, not just a handout. Mm -hmm. and even which is really traditional what Nigeria has been used mm -hmm. to from the uh, from inter international lenders. But they have to take a different approach, and that is the only thing that will actually take us out of this mess that we are in. Um, uh, federal government declaring as to strike illegal. Well, uh, yeah, I listened to the uh, the minister for labour and productivity, or what's his name again, Doctor Ingige. He <laughs> said they didn't give them warning that they, even the warning strike it's uh, illegal because they. Uh, they're working and they're supposed to be paid for the work. And now you just go off and you say it's a warning strike. But what I would say is the issue that is actually leading to the strike, I think the federal government and ASU should have averted or prevented this because it's still on the case of the IPPIS. I am one of the advocates <laughs> of ASU going on IPPIS. And ASU had come out with some concerns. And I think the federal government had not looked at those concerns. And that's why we are where we are now. You know, well, just if I may add just a little thing to say, there's a famous uh, proverb that we have in, in a local proverb that says, when two grasses, um, two el elephants are fighting, it's a grass, grass that suffers. suffers. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have these uh, students who are going to, not going to graduate just because of this particular yeah. uh, circumstance. So we need to really find a way to just make sure that at the very least, from even an ASUS perspective, that they make sure this, this uh, these uh, students graduate at the very least and get into the job market as soon as possible. Well, uh, we'll get to see what happens in the coming days. There mm. was supposed to be a meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if we're going to hear the outcome of it uh, today. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there'll be a meeting today. Who knows? Fingers crossed. All right, uh, that's some of the headlines on the front page. Let's look at this uh, court restraining APC officials uh, from interfering with NEC meeting. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, really, I don't want to talk about um, uh, the APC and their in-house um, troubles. <laughs> they are the architect of their own misfortune. Hmm. That's my belief. Because if you don't have what is proper internal democracy, you will not be able to govern the country. That's why I tell people. So, and we're seeing the crack that they've had in their walls during the primaries before the last general election which is what is now playing out now. They could fire the regime, and now some people feel they're in charge. Some people have gone to court and they're taking over. So it's back and forth. Now court is uh, restraining officials from interfering in the next meeting, so. All right, Vanguard is next. Um, I didn't realize we still had more papers, so we have to be quick. Our presidency has no hand in Senate's dethronement. We've took, uh, talked about that a bit. And then the WHO declaring a coronavirus outbreak a pandemic. CBN to fund local drug production, specialist hospitals. Uh, Lagos State government quarantines four siblings, two others. Uh, prepare for trouble, an NPC boss tells Nigerians. All right, uh, those are some of the uh, headlines. Uh, we have Oshimala APC leaders, more caretaker chairman, as court orders next meeting March 17. As calls wounded, shops looted, as togs attack Lagos suburb. Mm -hmm. Headsmen have taken over communities, that's Delta Assembly. Uh, quite uh, gory details on the uh, riders to that story, if you're going to take a look at it. Well, we do know that uh, Royal Father is saying death toll has risen to nine, and then mm -hmm. there are scores of persons uh, missing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, on the back page of the Vanguard, we have the usual sports stories, but I, I want to, I I uh, Delta State has been in the news for a couple of weeks now, complaining about increasing attacks yeah. in that region. Yeah. Not just them, we have some other um, Southeast states coming up to say uh, that attacks. Well, what, what's, what do you make of these, um, you know, cry that uh, they are making? Okay, the insecurity in the land is everywhere now. There's another headline that will relate to this. Even in the Lagos suburb around Satellite Town, I, I, I read it last night on the cable that there's some gangs with their face masked and they go about robbing people and taking, killing people. Scores of people died yesterday between Satellite Town and uh, an area called Vintage that the police couldn't even handle it. And now in Delta State, we've been seeing that over the year, uh, over the months in recent times. Even at the point, they had to exhume corpses in Delta State mm. for uh, forensic tests to actually determine whether they were killed by edgemen. So, so what we're saying is that the security outfits that we're trying to put in place should be across board because when you chase them from this area, they're going to another area. All right, let's go quickly to Tribune now, and I'll come to you, Ifi. Um, Asu warning strike illegal. Why we closed parts of Echo Bridge? That's uh, someone who's speaking. Um, Obasaki conveyed South South leaders meeting today. That's it on your screen. Uh, the WHO declaring COVID-19 a pandemic is also there. Um, bill to prohibit use of generating sets before Senate proposes 10-year jail term for <laughs> offenders. I've been uh, waiting to see that headline. And then we have uh, Sanusi reconciliation efforts wasted. That's uh, Abdus Salami. Uh, he was a one-time head of state in this country. At the back of the Tribune, uh, we have uh, Afai on Thursday, relevance of separation of powers and its application to Nigeria. That's uh, some of the stories, uh, some of the things you will find on the paper this morning. Let, let's, uh, if you let's um, look at this bill to prohibit uh, the use of generating sets. Unfortunately, I haven't actually read the bill. I normally like to read these bills before uh, we come to uh, talk about it, Felicity. Yeah. But what I will say is that it's a typical, it's a typical case of federal, making it more federal, the idea of putting the cart before the horse. Um, um, so I, I just feel like we, we, when, when we are at a panic level in Nigeria, when we reach panic mode, what we tend, tend to do is we just ban. We just do a, a, a blanket ban on everything and then just pray to God or just cross our fingers and pray that somehow miraculously things just work out. I think at the end of the day, this bill, I'm yet to read it. When I read it, I'll, I'll, I can give you a, a more in-depth analysis, but I don't think that it's going to work in Nigeria. Right? Uh, you have a thought on it? Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've read about it a little, not in detail, but the truth is that it shows that we have a lot of irresponsible lawmakers. At this present time, this is the bill they're passing. There's nowhere in the world that generating sets are not used. Like she said, they're putting, they're putting the cat before the horse. We don't even have um, electricity as it stands now. The, the government is not able to provide the power needed. And I, in, the, in the bill, it is stated that they're only going to allow hospitals and nursing homes Imagines, yeah, emergency that needed, yeah. to have. They, they, they didn't talk about the industries. How many industries run in Nigeria today that are on generating set? We don't even, it, you have to have the power. We must have the before generated electricity. About before you ban. talk about limiting, it's not even just banning. You can ban, you can limit, you can regulate, but not outright, like she said, blanket banning. All right. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the program this morning. It's appreciated. And thank first. you for watching. That's it uh, for this morning. We're back again for a Friday edition of After Press tomorrow. I hope you can join us again. My name is Felicity Ezeweke, wishing you a lovely day.